I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, we're gonna do a direct continuation of the last video and work with the watercolor effect. I'm gonna show you in a step-by-step -step way how you can take any object, could be a shark silhouette like this, or today's state of Massachusetts that we will make. You can do any country, state you want. And we're gonna use the clip group method which differs from the last video because instead of stamping out the shape at the end, I'm gonna show you how you can actually paint in watercolor directly inside the shape and see exactly where it goes. It also answers a question I had recently in the comments where she described a mountain scene like this and she wanted to only put the snow on the edge and the perimeter and how does she do that easily? Clip group, it's a perfect way to do it. I'll just show you. I've got the two purple halves there of the mountain in a clip group and this is what you can do with it. See that? This is just a blurred gray orb, but with the clip group, it's only gonna show up inside of that clip, which lets you do some pretty cool things. You could also take your pen, and if you wanna paint a snow-capped mountain, just scribble on top. When I let go, only, when, right there, there's a, looks like the Inkscape logo. Let's put it into practice and make our watercolor map here. If you're gonna follow along, I'm on the A4 template from the welcome screen. It's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. I don't work in this space, but it does help with watercolor being in the same ratio. If you want the real nitty gritty details on the filter settings for watercolor, that's what we did in the last video. I'm gonna breeze through them together with you today, but if you want that extra detail, check that video out. Okay, so I'm gonna do for my object, I'm doing the state of Massachusetts. Massachusetts. This is where I'm filming from. This is where I live with my family. I got this SVG from Wikimedia Commons. I typed in state map blank. All the states came up. I chose Massachusetts, downloaded it, brought it in here. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the county lines are showing. I don't want those. That's not going to be right for the look we're going for. There's an easy way you can fix that. And I decided to keep this in the tutorial in case you have the same problem. You can go to paint bucket, change it to the settings, fill by visible colors, threshold 10, gross shrink zero. The only confusing part about paint bucket is it's going to adopt the fill color of whatever you did last. So who knows what you were working on last. Just to make sure we know what we're doing, I'll make a rectangle so I know it's going to dump this color green, teal, whatever it is. Go back to paint bucket, hit it once on top, gets the whole state. Let's get the islands. I'll hit Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. And that's it. Very simple. You've now created a vector, but I have to group them. So I'll hold shift, get Martha's Vineyard and the main part, and I'll bring it across. We don't need the source file anymore. If this is your home state, you'll know like this part right here, this is where Woods Hole is. It doesn't actually connect. And just for speed, I'll double click. I have all my nodes here. Let's just make that a little bit more realistic. It's not perfect. You can go as detailed as you want, but because we're going with the watercolor effect, which is pretty organic, that's gonna be good for now. I've got just a state part. I'll hold shift, grab Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket. And I do wanna combine these. I'll go to path. Combine. The magic in this tutorial is creating that clip group. With it selected, do a right mouse click and you'll get a drop down menu that just pops up. Right here, create clip group. Hit that once and now we have a clip group, but it's a little confusing unless you have your layers menu come up. So go to object, objects. This is actually the objects menu. They're going to be enhancing this to have layers and objects all together. But for now, just so you know what we're looking at, this right here is the intro layer. I did this before. That was just that title in the beginning of the video. And over here on the demo layer, here's the eyeball. This is the layer that we're on. And if I hit the delta under this group right here, you'll see the clip. Highlight clip. And now whatever we do inside of this will stay inside of this. So we can paint with the watercolor and it doesn't bleed off the edge. Let's consider this our canvas. And I'm going to change it just down here on the color ribbon to something very faint right there. Hopefully you can see that on the video. If you're curious to see that it's really working, go ahead and grab a rectangle and open something up inside your shape. It should work just like normal, but when you drag it off the edge, it will vanish. So you know you have your clipping group set up and it works everywhere, anywhere you go. And that is the concept we're working with today. So delete that. Go back to clip, because we're now gonna create the watercolor. I'll take an oval, starting small does help. I wanna go to a bluish teal, something dark. Dark helps, starting small helps. Right about there, opacity is full. We'll go to filters, texture, 
watercolor. And okay, good, it didn't work, so I can show you the filter settings a bit. Right there, it is destroyed, so we'll go to Filters, Filter Editor. To breeze through it, the things we're gonna look at are Gaussian Blur, Turbulence, and Displacement Map. We'll start with our blur. If I reduce the blur, that, that fix it right there. So we'll do the blur down to maybe five. You can punch it in, 5.0. I'll zoom in for you. And it's okay if it's not all the way filled. We'll fix that with Displacement right there. And see how it's a little bit blurry and dull? That's where you wanna change the turbulence. So for turbulence, I wanna be on type fractal noise. Let's really get that going. That's, oh, I just saw one I like. If I grab the X, I can then, there we go. I can drag it around. That is the watercolor. That's just Inkscape doing math. I'm gonna go with this. I wanna have a lot of a bleeding edge there. I'll go back to displacement map and fill it in. If you remember from the last tutorial, if I move this, it's gonna change, and the way to stop it from changing once you have it the way you like is to hold Shift and Control and resize it. So that's one piece of watercolor. Let's make sure we're still in our clipping group, and we are. We'll have some fun moving them around and duplicating it in a second. Let's do another one. Start small. I'll go with more of a teal this time. It should adopt a similar filter setting. We'll see if it does. Filters, texture, watercolor, and it did not. Back to Filter Editor. Fixing the blur, we'll go down to 2.5 on that one. 2.5 is okay, let's add some turbulence. I did 0 0.90, that looks really good like that. Back to Displacement, drag this out. Resize it so it locks in and won't change on us. Pop this over here for now, we'll do one more. I'm gonna go with a lighter blue on this one. Filter, texture, watercolor. As you get more comfortable playing with the watercolor filters, you can also cheat and just change it from the top blur on the fill and stroke menu. Do we like it bleeding like that? I think so. Let's see what else we can get. I like the striations of that, we'll lock that one in. There we go, and now you have the freedom to actually see where things go. So that one looks good, Control D, duplicate. I think I'll pop it on top there, maybe tweak the color. That looks good. Come back to this one, let's flip it vertical, have some of that darkness coming off the bottom. I'll do a time jump here, fill all of this in, and then I'll show you how you can preserve it and get that edge looking good. Through the magic of editing, Everything's filled in. I had, I was gonna go for like the Boston metro area green. I don't like the way that looks. I'll bring it down here just to have some green, like a hint of the Celtics going on there. Let's zoom out because we have to group it all. Get this out of here and delete. Group it all together, control G, and that will allow you to then move it around as you need to. Also, I've learned if you go to export this as a PNG to use it someplace outside of Inkscape, it may crunch the computer a little bit to get it actually out. There's a lot of action going on with the watercolor effect. So just have patience, save it before you try to export it, just giving you the warning on that. I wanna do the final touch here. I wanna clean up the edge because the hard edge is fine, but there is a way to just get the exterior. If I hit blur, the whole thing becomes too blurry. That's not what we want. We just wanna have a feathered edge and there's an actual setting for that exact thing. Have your whole map selected, go to filters, blurs, feather, and you'll get a pop-up here. I think I have it preset for 2.5. If I hit live preview, you can see that's actually too strong. I'll move it down to maybe 1.0, enter. 1.0 is still too strong. I ended up going with 0.50, and that is what I'm going for. So let's see what we created here. There is Massachusetts. I hope this was helpful. You can use the clip group method for lots of different applications. Today, we made a map. Definitely like watercolor effect. I have some other projects I wanna do. If it's too much watercolor, let me know also in the comments just say enough and move on to the next one but i'm having a good time with these i hope you find them helpful and see you next time